<laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Belinda Kerr from Recruitment Garage and I'm delighted to have with me here today Cameron McLennan from Firefish Software and we are going to be talking about what's new in CRM and tech with a particular spin on how we can apply that to some of our databases that are perhaps a little bit unloved. So welcome Cameron and um, perhaps if we can just start with a little bit about yourself and what's new in Firefish these days. Yeah, so thanks very much for having me, Belinda. Um, so I um, head up the growth at Firefish Software. Um, we are a recruitment CRM based in uh, the UK, um, and we are also a sales and marketing platform for recruitment agencies as well. Um, so um, we do some really, really cool things on the marketing side, and the key concept behind us really is to allow our clients to make more money from the data that they work very, very hard to very, very hard to source in the first place. Mm, great. Okay. And what do you, so let's just, I guess, dive straight in. What do you think or what are some of the, the really cool things that are starting to emerge at the moment? So I think some of the cool things that are starting to emerge at the moment would be um, vendors are starting to put a lot more uh, importance on candidates actually being in control of their own data. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is if a candidate's wanting to uh, be in control of the information that's held on them, want to be in control of the marketing that they receive from the agency, want to just have a bit more visibility about what's actually being done with their data, uh, we're seeing that starting to come through a bit more. So there's a lot more respect being giving to candidates data and in turn what happens when you start to do that is that the engagement um, for any marketing campaigns that vendors are running starts to improve and um, because you're giving the candidates what they want when they want it rather than um, the old school that used to happen a number of years ago where you would just send a blanket email to everyone in your database and hope for the best that's all starting to change now which is really good okay and so you're actually finding that the, the candidates are quite engaged in their they're jumping on board and updating their own information quite readily. Yeah, particularly so in Europe because we've had the mm. what's the GDPR regulations come into force. Mm. So um, we have to uh, recruitment agencies have to treat candidates um, data with a lot more respect than than maybe they used to. Mm. So with that, they need to get a lot smarter with the marketing that they're doing and uh, make sure that they're adding value to their candidates at every point of the journey to keep them engaged, mm. so that they don't go cold and dead and then in line with that legislation, ask for their data to be removed. Mm. So given what you're saying there, Cameron, then now is really an ideal time for people who have had databases that have been a little unloved to yep. get serious about it because there's obvious, if there's engagement, there's money there to, to follow, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, very, okay. yeah very much so. I think... Um, Again, maybe sort of uh, 10 years ago, if you had a, a bunch of recruitment agency owners in a room, it would very much be, oh, my database is bigger than yours. Uh, I've got 500,000 candidates, <laughs> so you've only got 50,000. And that was sort of the key metric behind it. But now it's far more important if you've got a database of uh, 10,000 candidates and you send a, a marketing campaign out to them, if 2,000 respond, then it would be to have 100,000 in your database and only have 500 respond. And also as well, you know, a lot of people are running recruitment agencies with the foresight to maybe scale and exit those businesses mm -hmm. if you're planning on doing that having an engaged database is far more valuable nowadays than uh, than just having numbers in there yeah definitely so if I'm running an agency and I've got you know maybe three or four consultants and we've been throwing stuff into the database kind of a little bit ad hoc but we're really making the commitment we know there's money in there we know it's there somewhere we just have to find it what should, and maybe this is a little bit of a generic question, but where should we start to, to get ourselves perhaps a little bit more towards best practice? <laughs> yeah, so it's a really good question. I mean, I think there's a couple of things to, 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 uh, to think about there. Uh, one is a sort of a training and onboarding of, of new talent into your agency. Um, the it Make them aware of how important it is to have good quality data inside your database. Um, certainly with uh, Firefish users, the first time that a consultant makes a placement from the system alone, it's kind of a eureka moment for them. They're like, well, I put good data into the system. The <laughs> system's done its thing and marketed a candidate for me and I've just got a $10,000 fee off of the back of it. So when they start to see that value of putting good data into the system, uh, then they're far more likely to do that. Um, the other thing as well is that depending on the vendor that you're using, um, certainly from a, a Firefish point of view, you have the capability inside 
alongside Farfish to run a camp campaigns out to the database to try and re-engage them. And we have a candidate portal where the candidates can then log back in and actually update their preferences. Yeah. Say, for example, they're a, a sales manager looking for a job and they've been living in Sydney and they've just went, gone ahead and moved to Brisbane. They're able to update their preferences and say, well, I'm now looking for a sales manager's job in SaaS in Brisbane on 70k a year, for example. Yeah. So they're starting to almost self-clean and self-update the database as well. Well, wouldn't that be Nirvana? Yes, in an <laughs> ideal world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and are there, um, so there's the there's the, the vendors such as yes, well the, the CRM. Or, no, Wendy told me it's not CRM. It's more marketing system now. I have to talk more marketing yeah. system, not CRM. Um, and are there other tech quick tip things or other things that you can do as well? I know. No. So, so I think it's I think it's uh, sort of what we covered there, as well as um, making sure that you're actually adding value to your candidates all the time. What mm. normally happens in recruitment agencies is consultant gets a job on, they work the job, they maybe spend some money in advertising, put some opportunity, uh, put their opportunities out onto maybe job boards, maybe across social media. Then they do some proactive sourcing as well. All of those candidates that they get as a result of that are then worked. Uh, very very quickly very promptly to see if anything can if they can um, get get a placement from that but let's say for example that job that you're working the the client's only looking for one person the candidate the candidates that then come second third fourth in the process um, are then just left to gather dust on the database that candidate you've made a placement from it's like yay great we've got a fee from that and then those candidates are just sort of put to the back burner and over time they just sit there and gather dust mm -hmm. now what's not to say that those candidates that came second third and fourth in the process may be suitable for another client so you want to make sure that you're continually giving value to those candidates inside the database even when you're not working them uh, here and now yeah I always think it's interesting when I first got into recruitment which was when Noah was a boy it was very much about the here and the now and the active candidate and what became more apparent to me over time is a candidate is like a point in time. They're, they're a person from, from A to Z, and at any particular point in that time, they may decide to do something. But we kind of used to focus just on that one particular point, but now, obviously, we're, we're taking them from cradle to grave, so to speak, in their, in their career. Yeah. So it's um, yeah. the, lots yeah. of little opportunities to get them at you know, other points. Yeah, very much so. And you want to be thinking if you're making a permanent placement that you've you've might have five or six placements out of that candidate over their over their working career. Yeah. So you want to make sure that if they are considering a move, that you become their, their go to their go to person. And what some of our clients will do is um, they depending on the sector they're recruiting in, they may well set up a, what we call a talent pool inside Farfish. So you can build a specific search around particular criteria, and then when candidates fit those criteria, they automatically drop into a talent pool so say you're recruiting in um, accounting for accountancy for example you may well place a graduate accountant into the market and then you might want to set up a talent pool that when they hit three to five years post-qualified you know what they're worth in the market at that moment in time so you want them to go into that and then be able to market to them and say hey you know you're five years post-qualified now this is the going rate for what you do in the market and the chances are if those candidates are still with the same firm they probably haven't accelerated up through the salary scale the same way they would have had they moved mm -hmm. so it's a great way for them to get more engagement off of them at that moment in time as well yeah brilliant thank you um and what are the, I find this really interesting why people actually change databases or, or, or CRM or yeah. marketing systems. And I'm on quite a few forums and things and I'm often seeing people go, hey, you know, what's new? Who's using a really cool database? And I think, oh, this is a little bit, um, a bit backyardish. What, yeah. can you speak to that, Cameron? Yeah, so there are a variety of different reasons why um, people want to change CRM systems. Um, one might be the level of service that they've received from from a particular vendor. They may and they might not be getting the support that they need, so they decide that they're going to look for somebody new. Um, some people come through wanting a demo just because they um, they feel as though they need a change. <laughs> um, when that happens, it's the vendor's job to sort of dive into that a bit more and look a bit deeper in there and actually try and unearth the reason for that change. Um, there's no point changing for changing sake. There must be something in the background there that's actually causing that uh, that business owner to want to make a change. Um, 
often it's to overcome a particular challenge as well. So maybe they've been recruiting in a permanent space and then they move into contract and the, the CRM they're using doesn't deal with that particularly well. So that forces them to sort of consider a change. Um, I think the key thing really is that is, is making sure that the vendor understands the challenges. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a mixture of different reasons, but... I think, sure. and it's important for them to know it to us too, because you know we're all in business to yeah do the right thing, but you know we've all got mortgages to pay, and we all want to make money as well. And I think sometimes the recruitment agency owners I speak to, they do that because they know that as soon as they get on a call with a vendor, they're going to see through the vendor's eyes as to why that product is right. Um, yeah. And and I I'm, I personally went through four switchovers, and when I worked out. It wasn't until I had the new systems that I knew the questions I should have asked about those systems uh, that, yeah. That, yeah. I, that I didn't. So is it kind of like, I think I might have asked Wendy this question too before, but what are some of the key things that they should be asking? So if you were on a call doing it, what would you be expecting the, the agency owner to be saying to you if they were like on it? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and I think just to sort of go back a little bit on that as well, what um, sometimes happens is recruitment agency owners will, will think that they want a new system and they, they just decide that they're wanting a new CRM system. Recruitment agency owners are absolutely fantastic at running, uh, managing client relationships, interviewing candidates. But they, no one's ever shown them how to actually buy new software before. And it's not a purchase that they often make. They may never. They may only have made that purchase once before, or they might be starting up a new agency and never made it before. So it's really important that the vendor is able to coach them through that and, and sort of um, dig deep into the challenges they're having inside their business. And it's, it's our job, really, to coach them through that. So we would be asking them a variety of different questions, um, you know, like, you know, why are you looking to make a change now? You know, what's happening in your business that, that is that, that's leading you to, to reach a conclusion that you need a new system? And off of the back of that, then it's what impact is that having on your business? Mm -hmm. You know, if, it, if it's the fact that it takes you ages to manage the interview process through in, inside your certain CRM, what impact is that having on the team? Mm -hmm. And it's sort of diving into each different part of their business and really probing into that to figure out what the underlying issues are. Um, a common one that we get when uh, agency owners come through is that our system is clunky. <laughs> we hear that all the time. But what is a clunk? What is a clunky CRM system? You know, does it does it need oil? There's something behind the fact that it's clunky, and it's getting into that. So, um, it's a really really good idea for a business owner to uh, have a chat with their top billers, speak to the team unearth the challenges that they're having day-to-day -day using the system mm. to get a bigger picture and then really make sure that whatever vendor they go with are going to overcome those challenges. That's a good point too, Cameron, because I guess some of the people that are making these decisions aren't actually using them day-to-day -day either. No. And that's that's where the, no. the break is, I guess, as well. Yeah, okay. And, yeah, and, yeah. and what I also heard in what you were saying there as well, it's not just them asking you the questions, it's identifying if the vendor is actually asking them the right questions as well. Yeah, very much so. It's not mm. just a case of going on to a demo and, and being showing all of showing all of the features inside the CRM. It's got to be about understanding the challenges that that business is having mm. and then showing them a solution to those challenges in during the demo itself. If they're not seeing if you're not being demoed and being showing a solution to the challenges that your business is having, mm. then you're just watching that the system does this feature, it does this feature, it does that feature. Yeah. That's not going to overcome your business business challenges for you. No, and I, I've sat through a few of those and I remember coming out the end thinking, I, d I didn't know what else, I just remember thinking I don't know what else to ask, you know, and, and I didn't yeah. I didn't have a clue, but um, yeah, okay. And, um, and sort of going back to our last point as well, are there some examples that you would have of recruitment agencies where they've um, really started to turn things around with their data, where perhaps they haven't been been using them using the system well before? Yeah, very much so. So what we what we tend to do if we're if we're working with clients is that we'll do a sort of a before um, look at their data, and then we'll do a look at their data um, six months after they move over to Firefish. Uh -huh. And the goal for us there is to look at how the engagement across the database has uh, has changed. So um, we maybe get someone who comes to us where they've got uh, maybe fifteen thousand candidates in their database, and of those fifteen thousand, they've only worked a certain percentage inside the past two years. 
after the move to us, six months after we want to look at that data again and see if that engagement starting to improve across the database. Um, and then what happens ongoing if they're with ourselves is that they'll get reviews um, throughout the year, depending on the, uh, the size of agency. And what we'll do is we'll look at their data and we'll work with, them and work with them to say, well, okay, this part of your database is getting a lot of love and attention. You're doing a great job there. However, you are ignoring this part of your database. Let's put some things in place to make sure that that part of the database is being loved also so we do that as part of a review we have a couple of case studies on that as well Belinda mm -hmm. that, uh, that I can happily share with you if you're wanting them and um, wanting to drop them into the blog or anything so I can send them over to you later oh that'll be amazing so okay so what I'll do so if you're watching this I'll, I'll include a link or a, an attachment there with the blog as well yeah thank you that'd be amazing awesome. Cameron thank you and you're um, welcome and last question what slip-ups in fact, this might take us a while. <laughs> what what slip-ups do you see most often that could be avoided? Um, so I would say one of the ones that I see quite often um, is uh, not involving the team. So I kind of touched on that earlier on, yeah. but if you're buying a new CRM system, make sure you involve your team. The last thing you want to do is implement a new system and then a week later your top biller knocks on your door and says, hey, I don't like this, I'm leaving to go to a competing agency. So get those people involved as well. Um, you know, get get the team, get the team's perception. Um, make sure you give yourself enough time to make a system change as well as another one. Um, sometimes we'll get uh, maybe get agency owners who are out of contract in a month's time and they want a new system like immediately. Give yourself enough time to evaluate each part of the system. It's a big decision for your agency. It's, it's your CRM system should be helping your business make money. Um, and so it's, you know, one of the biggest decisions you'll make, just make sure you take time to evaluate everything. Um, so sorry, Cameron, to interrupt, but so how much time would you say is a kind of a, a standard? Oh, I would say you want to you want to give yourself a, a you know a good six to eight weeks from um you know when you decide to start the evaluation process right the way through and then ideally you want to allow for some crossover as well between systems so if you're on a current system just now it's always good to have like an extra two or three weeks with your current vendor uh, as you go ahead and make the switch as well and um, just give yourself that little bit of breathing space you don't want to be in a position where you're switching your your current vendor is switching your system off on a Friday and you're going live with a new vendor. <laughs> on the Monday uh, that's not ideal <laughs> um, another thing as well particularly for the people that are sort of involved in recruitment garage is, is think about um, how scalable is your solution um, you may well be running an agency just now with three or four recruiters working for you where do you see that business going in you know three four or five years and is the vendor that you're selecting just now able to keep up with where you see your business going you don't want it to get to a position where in two years time you need additional functionality and that means a CRM system shift think about scalability make sure that the, the vendor you select can grow with you as your business continues to grow as well yeah great advice and are there any because obviously you're a you're a techie you know all about the um, <laughs> that side of the yeah. industry um, are there any other things that you've kind of thought are really interesting that are happening at the moment in the tech world for recruiters or for recruitment agency owners <laughs> Yeah, I think um, I think what's happening is we're starting to um, borrow or catch up with a lot of the really really cool things that clever marketers are doing. So a lot of the technology uh, changes are, are things that are being that marketers have maybe been doing for two or three years. We're just starting to catch up on that now. So from a, a tech point of view, I think um, we're uh, yeah we're we're going to start to behave more like uh, really smart marketers um, on not only the candidate side but the client side as well. Mm. And are you seeing that starting to happen? You think we're we're taking it on, or are we still digging our heads in the sand? I think there are some there are some agencies out there that are really forward thinking that are that are doing a fantastic job at this, and there are some that are still behaving like they behaved maybe ten years ago. The mm. ones that are kicking on and starting to really take the marketing side of things seriously will still be here in, in the next ten years. The ones that aren't starting to adopt it, they're going to start to struggle. I think. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. What are with the guys that are, that are just setting out? They might they might have sort of launched just a little while ago, and they're looking at just starting to head down that path. Is there any kind of advice and and some and what a lot of what you've already said is is advice for them as well? But is there anything specific you'd say to them? Because what I see a lot of is um, people leaving the agency. They've got all the recruiting skills, but 
there's still a lot to learn. And they, so they dive in, they recruit, 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 they make some early wins because really they're operating like recruiters still. And then they yeah. hit this point where they go, my God, everything else is coming at them. Yeah. How, any advice how they can kind of navigate through from from what you've seen that I guess mostly talking about tech, but just, just you know, whatever comes yeah. to mind? Yeah, I would say like make sure that if you're, you know, if you're going out alone and starting your own agency and you're in a position where you're considering making a, an investment into tech, just make sure that the, the, the vendor that you go with sort of aligns with your values. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they understand the recruitment sector. Make sure that they understand the challenges that a startup recruitment agency will go through um, because there'll be many. Um, and make sure that they have the sort of infrastructure and resource to support you through that. Mm -hmm. um, there's no point in selecting a vendor that only works with enterprise agencies with more than 400 recruitment agencies because um, they won't have the time and resource to dedicate to you. Mm -hmm. So just make sure that you feel as low that that, that vendor um, is used to working with agencies your size and that they can coach and support you through get, getting up and running. It's really, really important that you that you sort of align yourself with a, with a vendor that, that has the same values as you because it's going to be a partnership over time. You might just be starting up now, but your business is hopefully still going in 10 years' time and you want to be working with someone that understands you and, and you have a good relationship with. Yeah, and it's so true with any part of business, isn't it? Whether it's tech or it's an accounting system or whatever it is, it's all right, you know, to buy it and put it in. But then when you're left to drive it yourself, you know, sometimes you can feel like you're in a, a roller skate with a V and a V8 underneath it. You know, you kind of know what to do at this level, but it's got too much power for you to really know. Yeah, what you're totally. Doing. That's exact. That's exactly what it's like. And like Wendy, our CEO, is so passionate about this. So anyone that provides like support or is in the we call it the happiness team at Farfish because their job is to keep the clients happy. Um, everyone that works in that team, um, we only make hires into that of ex agency recruiters or ex in house recruiters because we want them to be a Aligned with the clients we want them to know that these people have been there done it got the t-shirt they understand the challenges that you're going through and that's what helps sort of forge those long-term partnerships over time that's brilliant and so tell me now because um, i know um last time i spoke to wendy uh, where whereabouts are firefish now across i mean obviously you're you're across the globe but where are yeah. you actually on the ground across the globe now yeah, so we are, um, we have clients in over 28 different countries now, um, dotted all over the place. Um, the only base that we have in terms of an office is actually in Glasgow in Scotland. So um, we are based here and we do all of our sort of development and support and everything in-house from this base. And um, we don't have any sort of satellite offices or anything like that at the moment. Um, we, we just, we work out of Glasgow as it stands just now. Lovely, okay. Not, well, it's probably warmer there than it is here at the moment. It's actually it's actually been all right. Yeah, we've had a great we've had a great summer for the first time ever. Um, so so yeah, so, I normally look like Casper the Ghost when I do these things. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Cameron, that's really lovely. Thank you. And everything that you I love what you've said. It's all very um, practical. I think so. You know, we're recruitment agency owners are busy. There's so much going on. They're like, just help me get some practical advice on what I don't know. And that's what, everything that you said was really, really practical and, and very genuine. So thank you. And You're very if, well. if people would like to get in touch with yourself, what's the best way to do so? Yeah, so just um, look me up on LinkedIn. It's uh, Cameron McLennan, um, M C L E W -N, N A N. Just have a look for me on there. Uh, connect with me, drop me a message, or they can uh, follow me on Twitter at Cameron Farfish, okay. um, or just jump on the Farfish uh, Software dot com and go to the Meet the Team page, and you'll see some information about me on that. Yeah, and I'm going to give you guys a plug too because you've got an amazing blog. So if you're not getting the Firefish blog, jump onto it because it's got some awesome, awesome information on it. You guys are doing thank an amazing, you so much. amazing job there, yeah. So thank you, Cameron McLennan. Thank you so much for your time, Linda. I thoroughly appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> Ciao.